In this video, I'm gonna go over three bosses that could be purely AFK'd and that I love to do to make decent GP. So if that's interesting to you and you're excited for this video, make sure you stay tuned. Let's dive in. Now, the first boss I'd like to talk about is Krill. And if you don't know, Krill has definitely became a huge moneymaker ever since Necromancy has been released. Since the subjugation, armor does fall in hand with the Necromancy rituals. Now, the most annoying part is gaining all of the kill counts before you can actually take on Krill himself. Here, I do not know if there is a shortcut that you can take in order to reduce the amount of kills you have to do, or if there's a way you can completely skip it altogether. Together. please let me know down in the comments if there is a way as for the gear that I am using I am using the tier 90 death dealer set you can get away with using tier 80 and 80 combat stats but of course better the gear better the stats better results as for the aura I'm not using one you don't need to use one for this method whatsoever I do have a zuck cape you don't need a zuck cape you can use a max cape I'm just using a Zuck Cape for the rotation with the Death Scrolls and the Living Death that I'm going to be using to show you in a little bit. After that, I do have the Blood Amulet Necklace on, the Luck of the Dwarves because you never know, Nexus to hold all of my Necromancy runes and my Ectoplasm, my Tier 90 weapons, and my Scripture of When God Book that will not be active whatsoever. As for the inventory, pretty simple. You're gonna need emergency food, which I have selfish magic note paper for all of the drops in case you do get lucky with the subjugation drops. An enhanced Excalibur if you have it unlocked, just in case something wants to go a little south with your health and you ran out of emergency food. A spring cleaner, the way you have it is the way you want it, but he does drop a bunch of alcohols to where you can also alcohol or disassemble depending on your preference either a gem bag or the artificial's measure if you have it unlocked and an ectoplasmator because they drop a bunch of ashes and if you need extra prayer this can go a long way now you can use the ectoplasmator with the demon horn necklace if you are going to be using any type of prayers so you can always combine those two inside of your inventory along with your gear now once you hit your 40 kill count you can just run back up click on the big door and run through it now, you don't need to worry if you brought stuff that you have to activate or you want to activate your aura or anything like that. This is a time you can do it before you actually join an instance. But you also have a little bit of time when you actually join an instance to activate all the stuff that you need. Now, once you joined an instance, you will be brought into the same room. Now, once you look up at the kill count, you will notice that there is a buy time option. Once you click on the buy time option, you will have the option of spending an extra 200,000 coins in order to extend the fight by one hour. So you can ultimately have this as long as you want for a full on AFK method as long as you don't hit the logout timer. I just figured to bring this to everybody's attention because not everybody knows of this. Once you have everything activated and you bought more time, if you bought more time, then you run through the next big door. Once you run through the door, you're going to run to the corner piece of the carpet that you see on screen. This is so you can hit every single demon inside of this lair while Krill can also attack you. Now, as for the reaver board that I'm using, honestly, you can probably get this done by just using basic attacks. But what I was using was Conjure Army, Ghost, Skeleton, Soul Sap, Death Skulls, Touch of Death, Living Death, Volley of Soul, Sacrifice, Divert, and Finger of Death. The reason why I have it like this is because I have the Persistent Rage Relic on this method. So every time I'm outside of battle, my adrenaline does regain back to 100%. So I would start off by using a Death Skulls during one of the fights. And then after that, my next fight, I will use Living Death, which will reset my Death Skulls cooldown. Now, this Revo Bar is not a mandatory thing whatsoever. Like I said, you could probably get away with just using basic abilities to kill krill now what i would say is have fun trying to figure out what the reva bar just enjoy your time just mess around with it screw things around and krill is one of the ones that is very forgiven when it comes to actually fighting the boss now one thing you may have noticed that he does poison you but there is nothing to worry about even with the lower level gear setup because your ghost and your blood amulet is going to keep your health up by so much that you don't have anything to even worry about 
Now, during this entire method, this is coming from somebody who has over 1700 normal mode kills and only a few hard mode kills. Now, there is a method being able to AFK hard mode krill but there is a lot more that you have to set up because krill becomes so much tougher during the hard mode now after an hour of krill i was able to get around 6.4 million gp during that time that's also without including all of the alcohols that happened within and all of the coin drops since i do have the gold accumulator now there are other drops you can collect the ashes and everything above with all the seeds to make your profit a little bit more but it's not by much so you can expect anywhere between about 6.4 million gp to 7 million gp per hour while doing this method and that's also included with the expenses of your ectoplasms so in the end krill is not a bad boss whatsoever especially while trying to learn pvm and to be as afkable as it is with a decent amount of gp especially after necromancy Krill is definitely one of my favorite AFK bosses in the game. Now it's time to talk about everybody's least favorite boss. We are going to be doing one mechanic normal mode arc glacier. As for the gear setup, we are going to be using the same exact setup as we did for the Krill AFK method. With it being the tier 90 death dealer set, the Zuck Cape, the Blood Amulet, the Luck of the Dwarves, the Nexus for all the Necromancy Ruins and the Ectoplasms, the tier 90 weapons and the Scripture of Wen God Book, not activated and unless you've done this method before believe it or not all you need is an enhanced excalibur in case something wanted to go a little sideways for some reason as for the reverb bar it is going to be a little bit different than the curl setup we are going to be using conjure army ghost death skulls soul sap touch of death volley of souls sacrifice and finger of death whether you have the Zuck Cape or not, Death Skulls only gets used once per fight, and it does have the cooldown of the 60 second cooldown, of course, to where you might not even get a second Death Skulls during a second fight. So you don't need the Zuck Cape for this Revo Bar whatsoever. But, of course, you have the Conjure of Army, so you have all four of them out there just to deal more damage. I do have Finger of Death at the very end end because you're going to have multiple times where you need to do a bunch of adrenaline dump because you're just sitting at 100 percent because death skulls is on cooldown so finger of death is at the very end of it so it just helps you kill arc glacier a little bit faster by using the adrenaline that you weren't using in the first place now i wouldn't call myself a pro when it comes to normal mode arc glacier and yes i do know that melee is definitely the one to go to since you're not going to have any type of expenses but during this method you can easily just use the ectoplasms while doing normal mode arc glacier and it's not too pricey for especially how much you make back in profits I would like to also note that if you have the upgraded Pontifex ring, you will also gain the tier 3 Elder Troves, which will also boost your profits by a large margin. Now, after doing an hour of our Glacier, I got about 3.2 million GP in that hour, but most importantly, I got 285 Blue Charms for all of your Binding Contract needs, which if you guys are interested in any kind of that money-making methods on that, check down in the description below. I'm going to have a bunch of them linked down there for you. But our Glacier is known for charm farming especially the blue charms where nothing else almost compares to how many blue charms you can actually get in an hour other than that after the expenses you're looking at about still the same about 3.2 million gp in that hour which is not bad for a boss that does nothing to you and you need almost absolutely zero requirements now my take on Arc Glacier is somewhat of a nostalgic feeling even though the boss hasn't been out for so long but that's because I took a very long break from RuneScape and when I came back is the same time Arc Glacier was released. And during the time of me coming back Arc Glacier was the go-to AFK boss for me to gain all of my combat experience with range and magic. But other than that, you gain a decent amount of profits during this time. So that is one of the main reasons why I do enjoy Arc Glacier as an AFKable boss. As for the last boss, we will be taking on Osseus as an AFKable method. Now for this boss to be AFKable, it does require a pretty high setup. 
as for the requirements, there are a couple things you do need to get done before you have the chance to take on Osseus. First off, you will need to complete the Osseus Rex quest, which does require level 70 necromancy and also level 30 archaeology. As for the requirements for the fight itself, the requirements are 90 necromancy, so you can actually take on Osseus without having any trouble. Level 80 summoning, so you can use a Holy Scare Rep Familiar, which we will get into a little bit later. 107 Herblore, so you can use an Elder Overload South. 95 Prayer, so you can use your Ancient Curses. And yes, that does require the completion of the Temple S Intestine quest. And following up, you're going to need 89 inventions, so you do have your Ancient Gizmos unlocked for your perks on your gear. My only recommendation for you guys is to find your favorite TV show, because this AFK method is amazing. Following that up, you can expect to make about 15.8 million GP per hour, and around 600k XP per hour for Necromancy, and about 200,000 XP per hour for your Constitution. As for the gear, we are going to be running with the tier 90 Death Warden set along with the tier 90 Death Dealer gloves just so we can put on an extra 2% chance of landing the death mark on Osseus. As for the aura, I will be using the Vampirism aura for this video, but the Equilibrium aura and the Inspiration aura do work while using the tier 90 method. After that, we do have the Max Cape on this video. I am not running with a Zuck Cape, so I can show you guys the tier 90 gear and weapons along with just the Max Cape can get this done. As for the Necklace Slut, we are running with the Necklace of Salamancy. I like to use this since it does do extra damage to dinosaurs, but it also gives you an extra 3% drop rate while killing dinosaurs. Also, if you don't have that, you can always use the Salve Amulet E if you have that unlocked since Osseus is classified as undead. As for the ring slot, we are running with the Occultist Ring. If you guys don't have the Occultist Ring, the Reaver's Ring will do more than enough for this since you will have almost a 100% hit chance on Osseus. As for the ammo slot, we do have our Nexus, so it holds all of our Necromancy Ruins. We are running with the Tier 90 Weapons, just to showcase that you can get it done that way. And in the Pocket Slot, we do have a Scripture of When God Book. As for the inventory, it's not an AFK method unless you have potion reservoirs. And inside of those potion reservoirs will be your Elder Overload salves because Aussie sits like a truck and you need every boost that you can possibly get. I do have a blessed flask, but anything with a prayer renewal can always work here. A full restore flask could work for you guys, but you don't really need it because you're going to have your powder of penance and your holy scarab working together to keep your prayer up. We do have some magic note paper inside of the inventory because you're going to have all of the damaged dinosaur bones that you will be noting so you can throw it into your alchemizer later and like i said we are going to be running with a holy scare rep familiar that's going to help reduce how much prayer you're using while using soul split during the method and that goes hand in hand with your powder of penance which every time you get hit you regain some prayer we are going to bring a spring cleaner because actually Osseus drops a lot of alcohols and when i say a lot you gain a lot of coins by just using the spring cleaner from all of the alcohols that Osseus drops. After that, we do have an enhanced Excalibur. If you have it unlocked, bring it with you everywhere you go for PVM and, and an ancient elven roachinal shard. If you have it, if you don't, you don't need to bring it because, like I said, the powder of penance and the holy scare familiar will do just great. As for the relic powers, I have conservation of energy, persistent rage, and death note. Conservation of energy, you don't really need. You can put a death ward in there or berserker's fury. It just helps with the one time that you actually use your death scrolls in the very beginning just to hold an extra 10% of your adrenaline. Persistent Rage is important and is mandatory to put into your Relic Powers. It's only because in between all of the fights, you want to be able to regain all of your Adrenaline back before the next fight actually starts. As for Death Note, you can bring it if you want. It saves you a lot of money with your Magic Note Paper, but it does note all of the Dinosaur Bones that you gain, but it does not note all of the damaged Dinosaur Bones, so that's why we still bring Magic Note Paper. As for the perks on the gear, it is not best of slot stuff, but it is stuff that will work and help out for you. So as for the augmented skull lantern, we will be running with precise six and only precise six. This is just to show you guys that you can get it done without best in slot perks. After that, we have our death warden robe bottoms that has lucky six absorbative one and absorbative four because I am weird like that. And then death warden top, we have crackling four crystal shield four. And then our Death Guard, we have Aftershock 1 Undead Slayer, which Undead Slayer would be very important to get 
on fighting anything undead because it does boost your damage up by a lot. As for the Revolution Bar, we are going to be running with Conjure Army, Ghost, Soul Sap, Death Skull, Scythe, Skeleton, Divert, Volley of Souls, and Anticipate. And how this rotation actually works, the Death Skulls only gets used once per fight, and it's at the very beginning of the fight. You'll never see that be used again, even while using a Zuck cape now the scythe does hit precisely for when all the little dinosaur babies come running at you and you will see that later on when i show off the fight and divert happens to be in the right spot for when osseus decides to do her big chomp later in the fight and divert happens to be used at the perfect time anticipate is at the very end of the revolution bar because there is a tail swipe that happens when the baby dinosaurs come out and it does stun you but anticipate gets used pretty often during that moment to where you do not get stunned which is super crucial for the entire rotation later on in the fight and just in case i have to say we will be using all four of the conjures for our conjure of army now there are a few ways to get to Osseus. If you guys have taken out Osseus before, you can easily use Wars Retreat Portal, or if you are max, you can use the max guild portal before you've even had a single kill. Other than that, you are gonna have to go to Anachronia's base camp and you're gonna have to run all the way around as you see on screen to the teleportation device, which does take you to the Rex Matriarchs layer and then you just follow through with that but again if you guys have completed the quest already you already know where you have to go to meet osseus now before you actually take on osseus i highly suggest joining an uninstant counter you go into the osseus teleportation device and you have to set your arrival point to osseus not the island but where you pop up right in front of osseus on her side of the map this just makes things a lot smoother for the initial first fight for everything that you need prepared for this AFK method. We'll get into that a little bit later while I show the fighting. Now, before you join an instance, you want to make sure everything is activated. You want to turn on your vampirism aura. You want to activate your god book. You want to make sure you switch on one of your potion reservoirs, which is holding your elder overload salves. You summon your holy scabrab familiar and you sprinkle a bunch of powder of penance you make sure you hit your darkness and then you run through and once you run through you're just going to go and click on the teleportation device that you've already adjusted to arrive on osseus side and then you're just going to turn on your prayers and for the prayers we are using will be soul split and the tier 95 necromancy damage prayer and at this point, you are going to let Osseus hit you. You never click Osseus in the very beginning because it actually screws up the rotation for the entire fight. Because if you start attacking too soon and before Osseus actually starts attacking you, the rotation for Divert and your Anticipate do not line up properly. And especially your sights when it becomes with the baby dinosaurs. So you want to make sure Osseus actually hits you. You do not hit Osseus at all. Now, you saw the Death Skulls get used. That is the only time Death Skulls is used in every single fight. Now, Scythe gets used at the exact time right there. And you'll see that when the baby dinosaurs came up, you actually took out a good bit of them with the third tier of the Scythe. And then during the entire time the baby dinosaurs are attacking you, you hit them with at least a tier two Scythe once more and then you want to at least make sure two of them are dead every single time but you don't have to worry about it because they hardly do any kind of damage lately especially with the new conjure now with this mechanic you will notice that divert gets used during your stun part where you have to deal 5,000 damage to osseus and that is super crucial for every single time you do with this rotation because osseus will do about five to 6,500 damage to you if your divert does not go off in that very certain spot but again when you watch the rotation when you start abilities in front of divert that need to go off before because divert will still go off in that meantime because it takes a while for osseus to be able to do the giant chomp now if you were lucky enough for your death dealer gloves to invoke death on osseus you will finish off the fight at 30k health but if not it is still okay you'll have the baby dinosaurs come up and they'll start healing osseus for a longer period of time than the first time you see them but they are there healing osseus but you don't have to worry because you do finish off osseus pretty quickly as the baby dinosaurs are still healing her 
Now, during the entire fight, the only thing you have to keep an eye out for will be your darkness incantation, which I only suggest you ever activating in between fights when your adrenaline is at 100%. Because if you don't have 100% of adrenaline going into each fight, you will die because your rotation does not happen exactly the way it needs to for your divert and your sights to hit. So again, darkness incantation in between fights only when you are at 100% adrenaline. Other than that, you're going to have to keep an eye on your potion reservoir. If it goes away, then you're going to have to you know, open up a new one and put an Elder Overload South in it and switch it on. And your Powder of Penance when you hit about 30 minutes into each of the fights. Everything else has a long enough duration to be able to last the entire fight, which I'm speaking for your Aura and your Holy Scarab familiar along with your god book now while doing this afk method you could expect about 30 to 33 kills an hour with the tier 90 setup now the drop rates are not terrible whatsoever i'm looking at about every 300 kills i get a gel cell key and about every 100 kills i get an oculus ring which goes for about 30 mil a piece right now and in betweens, you get a bunch of different loot as well. You get all of the spear components that you need to make the spear, along with the new Skitska's Hypno Wand pieces that Osseus does drop, but it doesn't count to a collection log. Now, for the normal loot that you will get for the dinosaur bones, if you have the Death Note Relic, then you don't have to worry about noting them because they're already noted on drop. You just grab them. Now, for the damaged dinosaur bones, you will have to note every single time. And I would suggest after every hour of doing Osseus to take your damaged dinosaur bones and go throw them in your Alchemizer since they do Alchemize for 5,000 GP each. Now, the main reason, of course, for Osseus being one of my favorite AF cable methods, it's simple. It's the drops. The gel cell key still goes up in around 90 mil GP each, and the occultist ring is still roughly around the 32 mil mark as I am making this video. Other than the drops, Osseus is pretty fresh to RuneScape, so you don't have a nostalgic feel, but you have a refreshing feel of bossing inside of the game. Now, Osseus is also pretty cool. You got to admit, it's a giant skeleton dinosaur that has a bunch of mechanics and a bunch of baby dinos that like to attack you. So that is the reason why I have Osseus as one of my top three AFK boom bosses inside of RuneScape. But that does come an end to this video. If you guys found anything interesting or anything useful, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys are brand new to this channel and would like to see more PVM stuff like this, make sure to hit that sub button and hit the bell icon so you guys know when I upload next or go live for streaming. But until next time, guys, I hope you stay safe. See you.